Yes, welcome guys. So today I want to talk about the like of logic in forex trading because it has been getting uh, quite popular lately and I use it in my trading myself and I see quite a few misconceptions when it comes to applying this in forex trading. So that's why I wanted to make this video. Um, what you see in front of you are the schematics Wyckoff uses to identify and analyze supply and demand in trading ranges to identify what the bigger player is doing and potentially join him. As you can see on the left, we have accumulation. This is the start of an uptrend. It doesn't always look like this. There are many, many variations, but an uptrend always starts with accumulation. And during that phase, the bigger player is uh, accumulating his order. He is scaling in positions because if he just put his order in, he would push the market and he would uh, cause slippage for himself, which causes a, um, a worse fill price, which causes drawdown and which increases chances of losing. So in order to avoid the slippage, he carefully uh, plans, he carefully scales in his position, he builds a long position. And then once his long position is completely in the market, that's when you see the breakout to the upside. There is more to it, but this is the basic idea of it. What's important to notice is that there's always the resistance, so the upper uh, upper line, the upper resistance, the upper part of the range, and you have the lower part of the range. And what's important is that most of the times you will get a false breakout to the downside and then the real breakout to the upside a retest of the original breakout point which is very important and then you get it moved to the upside and that's 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 where your uptrend is so this is your uptrend and usually during that uptrend you will see small retracements or small trading ranges sometimes you will see kind of flag forming a lot of things that are happening. So that's accumulation. Distribution is um, almost the exact opposite. Uh, again, a range is forming. You see usually the end of a trend is indicated by a strong move. And why is that happening? A lot of people, when they see a strong move, they're going to buy. And that's exactly the opposite of what the bigger player is doing. There's a big move. Everyone is buying, so there's enough liquidity to sell his position to. He sells his position and then uh, starts um, accumulating a short position. And that's basically the idea uh, behind Wyckoff. So what he does is he identifies the supply and demand. He analyzes the supply and demand in a trading range using volume and price action and time. Uh, in Forex, we don't have real volume, so uh, I only use price action, but even the price action in ranges can be very telling of what's actually happening and what's actually going on. So I want to look at a chart to help you identify uh, these, these market phases and how you can profit from them and how you can trade them in Forex. So. So this is a chart of the euro dollar. It's not a recent chart, but this is a very clear chart when it comes to Wyckoff. Um, let me draw some things in for you. Yeah, so if you remember the chart I showed you previously, I'll show it again. You will see a, a lot of similarities. Accumulation, retest, uptrends. Buying climax over here, 
this is your AR automatic reaction. The failed rally is also called the UTAD. And then a shift in movement and a downtrend. So let's dive further into this. Let me clear all the drawings. Yes. So what's actually happening? As I said before, the, um, the accumulation phase and the distribution phases don't always look like the one on the picture. So this is one, this is an accumulation phase, but as you can see, the range is quite sloppy and it's moving down, but it's still an accumulation phase. There's uh, a big player accumulating a long position in this phase. And what's important to notice is the fact that the, um, is the aggression of the moves, I mean. As you can see, we have a downtrend and we end up here. Look at this massive wick on this candle. This can only be caused by aggressive buying from a big player. This is a massive wick, a very aggressive buying. And that's your selling climax. As you can see, a strong move to the downside and then a very strong reaction. And as you can see, once that price level gets hit, there's another strong rejection and then a violent move to the upside. It's very violent. We don't see this earlier. As you can see during the previous retracements in the trend, this one is very, very violent. So that tells me that something something is up. They also call this the change of character, which means there is something happening. This the, the character was a downtrend with normal retracements and all of a sudden these retracements get very aggressive and very strong. That tells me that there's someone scaling in a big position. And every time that low gets broken, there's a rejection. And once again here, very strong and aggressive. And another one here at the spring. Look at the movement. It goes all the way to the upside in a very short time, all the way to the upside of the range. And then we also get this breakout, a very strong breakout. And that tells me that the, the, the player that was accumulating his long position is now finished. So what's important to notice when you're looking at accumulation is these changes of character. You want to see aggression. You want to see strong moves, not, not like you've seen before, like this retracements. They are not very strong, but these are strong and aggressive. So you want to look at time and um, spread basically. So how big are the candles? How aggressive are they? Is there a range developing? What happens when the one side of the range gets breached? What happens when there's a breakout? Does it hold? And as you can see, it does hold over here. And then it retests uh, the breakout point and it takes off and this is usually where I enter my trade. This is the safest spot. This is the place where you have your confirmation that the bigger player has been accumulating, that the breakout has happened, and that we are in the start of a new uptrend. All right. I hope that has been clear. Let's look at distribution. So distribution is basically the exact opposite. This one is very, very clear. As you can see, we have the buying climax. And what does it start with? A strong move to the upside. All right, that's very telling. People will be buying when there is a strong move and that gives the bigger player enough liquidity to sell short. All right, so we have the buying climax. Once again, it's you can see a clear wick, a clear rejection. So someone is selling into the strong move. And then what's more important is look at the retracement we get to the downside. We have had retracements previously in the uptrend, but look at the strength of this one. This is something completely different. And this indicates that there's someone with a lot of money trying to do something. So this is something that I really notice. I take a note on my chart and I look for further range development and look what happens. As you can see, we get some choppy price action. 
basically a range developing. And what's more important is that we have a few swing highs developing. And as we all know, above swing highs is liquidity. And as I said before, the bigger player needs liquidity for his big orders to get filled efficiently. Otherwise, he gets slippage and he pushes the market against himself. So liquidity is important. And you can imagine that what people that have been short that have shorted here, so that had the balls to short this big move, people that shorted here, the stop losses will be either at this red line or this one. Everyone puts the stop losses at swing highs. So once these stop losses get hit, um, you want to see what happens to the liquidity. You want to see if there's a genuine breakout or there's a quick rejection. And as you can see, there is a quick rejection. There's a strong, violent move to the downside as soon as the stops get hit. And look at the strength and the, the violence of the move. It's way different than the ones we have seen before. And that really indicates that a big player has used all the liquidity to, uh, to drop his short order, basically. What's also important to notice is that once these two red lines, once these levels get broken, you don't only have uh, stop losses, but you also have people that are buying through these highs. So you have um, two types of people that are adding buy side liquidity. You have the ones that, are, that have been short and they have the stop losses and the stop loss from a seller is a buy order because he buys back at a higher price, which is causing the loss. And you also have people that are actively buying because they think this is a genuine breakout. And this causes the liquidity. And then you want to analyze what happens to the liquidity. So that's basically analyzing the supply and demand and what's happening in the range. And as you can see, the violence reaction, the violent reaction really gives me a clue that there is a bigger player trading. This is the lower end of the range. Once again, my entry is the breakout. This is my confirmation. This is the confirmation that there has been a big player um, getting short. And that's where I enter. I know a lot of people, or at least I know a lot of people try to enter after the UTAD or after the spring. So basically over here, you can do that, but it's way more risky in my opinion. I do have a strategy that uh, where I enter after the spring, but uh, the majority of my trades is entered at the or at the breakout zone. As you can see, then we get a move down and then we get another accumulation pattern. This being the retest, this being the spring, this being the selling climax. And this being the stronger move than we had before. So as you can see, it comes back very often. And it also is happening on all the time frames. I trade this on the, on the hourly. Uh, but what I want to, uh, you guys to take away from this is that these things happen. And if you want to trade them successfully, um, using volume in Forex is probably not the right idea because Forex is not centralized, which means you are not looking at actual contracts, actual volume, but you're looking at tick volume, which is something entirely different. You still can use this method. I do it as well. I use it profitably. I've been using it for years now. You can do it, but you really need to analyze the ranges. You need to analyze the supply and demand in the ranges identify where liquidity is, identify um, these strong and violent moves, if they are happening, where they are happening, and identify what's happening when the liquidity gets triggered. And then when you do this the correct way, it can really give you a good idea of what's actually happening in the range, and then you can potentially join the bigger player. So I hope this made sense, and uh, I speak to you guys next time.